So hi everyone, uh, once again, um, next up is two gentlemen from K-Lab uh, in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, please introduce yourself, starting with Takahashi-san. Yes, uh, this is Nao Takahashi from uh, Real-Time Rendering Research Group in K-Lab. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, background modeling. Hi, then Hu-san, please. Hi everyone, my name is Hu and I'm a senior technical artist uh, working along with Takashi san in Triple R. Uh, then uh, could you talk a little bit about the presentation today? Yes. Uh, this, uh, this tool was uh, created, uh, created in hope of creating, uh, sorry, uh, this tool was created in the hope of creating an environment where level designers uh, can create and test the map they need in the future. Uh, also, I, I, uh, also, I, uh, sorry. Also, if if the tool uh, can be used with uh, various specific case, uh, uh, specifications, uh, it will increase the use of this tool uh, by being able to create what. Uh, what you think of uh, automation, uh, automa uh, automation, uh, bus style models, and uh, iterations. Uh, designers uh, have more time to work on their hero asset, and uh, level designers uh, can improve the experience and create quality of the game they create. Uh, that's what we want wanted to create. Uh, it's going to take a little more time. Thank you, uh, -san. Uh, Sorry, Kutsu-san. Yeah, and for the bonus part of this presentation, I'm going to talk about a character reduction and and basically, I'm going to talk about how the brand new KineFX helps us uh, simplify and improve our workflow. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, let's begin the presentation. Hi, thanks for joining. This is Nara Takashi from Real Time Rendering Research Group in K Lab. I'm in charge of background modeling. This is my colleague Hu Shuai. Hi, everyone. My name is Hu Shuai. I'm a senior technical artist working along with Takashi san in Triple R. Today, I'd like to share the story of map generation and after that, my colleague who will talk about KineFX in Houdini 18.5. Here, the two research cases, what we are going to talk about. For map generation, it was shown that it is possible to create a map from a single PSD. But I want to see how it could be customized. We also looked at how these assets could be scaled down to a point where it means the quality of what we expected. For character reduction, we're going to talk about how the brand new KineFX helps us simplify and improve our workflow. The first step is map generation PSD parsing. I'm sure you've already been introduced about this in several sessions. We took the elements necessary for an assembled auction game where the map is built from above and automatically create and optimize them. Here is what I did this time. To create a map, not only the terrain, but also the collision that matches the terrain is generated. After generating the terrain, we have made it possible to reduce geometry, simplify materials, and reduce individual scatter models. The map created from PSD in the flow as shown in the figure below. The map is laid out by PSD and the vegetation and other features are arranged in accordance with the terrain we have set up. And then you can use it to create the following material which is assigned by using the mask area for shape settings. Create asset per layer. 
interest shows the center of the map. Walkable shows the area where your character acts. Terrain shows the unmovable area. And height varies the elevation of the terrain. White part changes to black. Load the PSD data you create called Map Circuit and generate the following assets. Segment each map area by null mesh, cohesion wall and ground, and tile division. Various area information is passing from PSD layer using lab stress PSD files up. They are stored in three primitive groups. You can make the following adjustment to the loaded PSD. Set the mesh density for height spec and you can adjust the elevation of the interior map drawn the PSD height layer. You can also adjust the area of the pixel and adjust accuracy of the terrain speed time and ground and wall cohesion. Once about adjustments have been made, we can save the map model in BG format and move on to the next step. In the next step, the video file is given a landscaping and then set up the area to which a scatter information and material are assigned. By using terrain model we just created, right the blue area which has painted by PSD to form the map. Create the mask for assigning the scatter information and material by using mask area. Assigning Boronai to the terrain mask area to give each Boronai its own height variation. This height variation changes higher when you move away from the interest mask which is in the center of the map. Boronai's finest altitude variation and height variation are displayed in numerical values. The amount of change can be adjusted in linear graph. The area of vegetation and structure is generated from the slope of the walls and ground as mask information. The maps shown on the right were combined and used as the threshold for generating scatters. The following adjustments are made in parameter control. Controlling the number of scatters for various objects. Control the overall object count. All of the processes I just introduced are now HDA and processed automatically in the PDG. Create the higher level of the map geometry, scatter information, cohesion model and also make the mask information for light probe and material assignment. This data you create here will be output to your Unity project folder and available to view immediately. Now, let's compare and confirm the model created by PDG. The automatic generation of models from the high spec to low spec is good as we expect, and is made by single UI slider. You can adjust the number of positions of each scatter of by a single parameter. You can also adjust the number of positions of each scatter model individually. Since it may not be visible on the output screen in case of detailed small model. High spec terrain material uses PBR with three terrain layers with three textures and one mask texture on each layer. The low spec terrain material is a composite of each texture and is represented by a single mask texture. The low specification texture are generated from the high specification texture. The next step in making a scatter model by using the model called LODA to create the LOD chain. From this model, we can create various LOD chain. Let me 
explain in details. As a first step, create a high specification model called LODA. We can create the optimal LOD chain for each platform and could provide the best looking model to fit each spec based on this model. However, it must be simple silhouette with no alpha card. The material for the high spec model is using the three textures by PBR. The material for the low spec model uses a single texture with a PBR baked in it. This can be done automatically by Substance Painter. However, dynamic light rendering is not possible. But when we consider about the limitation of low spec and mobile device, high quality rendering is possible. Now let's get to the result. Based on Fortnite mobile optimization methodology, we were able to build an automated scale down approach that allowed us to achieve multiple use within a 10% increase in cost. We were also able to combine terrain scaling down and deployment for lookdown action game to create a highly versatile approach. Moreover, by using power of procedure, we are able to tailor the environment for different machine spec to increase the value of this tool for a variety of lookdown action gain. As a level designer, that's the shaping and adjusting of the map from their Photoshop sketches. The artist can focus better than their own job. This method has a lot of points to improve, but depending on how it's improved, it could be used in more flexible game genres. This process makes it possible to mass produce various map layouts like the ones shown on the right using only PSG. This approach looks very promising, but we need to find a way to make it production ready. What update can be made to meet the requirement of more complex game design? How do we generate different echo ports from the same PSD input? How do we differentiate between natural and artificial objects? How far can you push your visuals? We've introduced the first part of the project. As a follow-up report, we hope to have another opportunity to expand more active future to everyone. Thank you for listening. All right, from here, I will talk about how the brand new KineFX that came along with Houdini 18.5 helps us improve our workflow. Back in September at CEDIC in Japan, we actually did a session about procedurally reducing skin characters. And here are some quick catch-ups about what we have done before Houdini 18.5. As you can see in the video, those are the final results of our workflow in each target fidelities. We basically created the workflow that spans across Maya and Houdini. Before Houdini 18.5, in order to manipulate skin weight information, we need to import our character into Houdini, which is not friendly for batch processing by PDG. So we decided to bring the data we needed separately from Maya to Houdini. Since we separate the data flow of geometry and skin weights, at the end of the process, we have to feed those results back to Maya again 
and patching for the final character FBX. This workflow works properly with some tricky integration, but as you can see, it's not very straightforward. And with KinFX, our workflow simplified to this, and batch process becomes more controllable and user-friendly. Let's dive a little bit deeper into our process. For polygon reduction, we simply use polyreduce soft in Houdini. It's indeed very powerful that cuts polygon counts and preserve quads and even UVs at the same time. Since we are using it on skinned characters, it's also important to reduce polygon while retain proper topologies for better deformation. To deal with that, we created a custom attribute called retention for each point on the model. It indicates if certain points should or should not be reduced. Retention is calculated from original skin weights. That means if the point is influenced by more bonds, more the point should be preserved. After that, we made polyreduced soap sensitive to our retention attribute, and that results into a more on-demand and controllable solution of polygon reduction. Next is our way of reducing amount of skin influences, which is necessary while optimize game performance for mobile platforms. First, we tried capture correct soap and its function of limiting the amount of capture regions. Since we only carried skin weight information with us from Maya, the bone structure of the character is simply not exist inside Houdini and capture correct so just not work. Eventually, we use attribute regular solve and type in some expressions. But now with KineFX, attributes are all supplied and capture correct solve works flawlessly. We can now preview the reduction results with animation applied like that in the video that can help us tweak parameters interactively. The new FBX character import soap, which brings skin mesh FBX into Houdini by one node, and along with all the data we need for manipulation. Also, the new Rob FBX character output soap for direct exploitation of our results, which get rid of those back and forth between Maya and Houdini. So that brings an end to our presentation. Thank you very much for diving. Thank you very much.